Hey creative friends, today we are painting and this is my workspace. A little sneak peek before it gets pretty messy. As you can see I have very fancy water cups to use and I am really excited to share a bit of my process with you in this video. So what I'm doing here is I am applying a base coat of cadmium red paint mixed with a little bit of white and a little bit of cadmium yellow. And what this does is it completely coats the canvas in this warm red color that creates a really nice warm undertone to the painting that I am putting on top of it. The other great thing about this process is it gets you started because sometimes it can be hard when you're staring at a white canvas to put that first bit of paint on. But when you're creating a base coat, that doesn't really matter. And you're warming up your body and you're kind of shaking off the cobweb, shaking off any fear and doubt that might be stopping you from just simply getting started. So I painted this on Friday, February 19th. It was a beautiful snowy morning here in Connecticut. And it was just like a really peaceful morning to spend painting. I don't know if you can really see the snow, but it was pretty, trust me. <laughs> Sometimes you gotta wait for the paint to dry. And then we can get started. All right, so this is the inspiration picture I was starting from. It's a beach in Massachusetts, close to where I grew up. And that picture is one that I took over the summer of a storm that was kind of coming out across the water from the Boston area. So what I do here is I just kind of start painting. I start with some more muted colors to kind of sculpt out the shape of the painting that I'm going to create. Some basic shadows and highlights. And this kind of acts as a guide for the rest of my painting. Um, you know, in general, I'm painting a sky area and then I'm going to paint a general beach sand area and then a general water area and it builds out from there. So this is just a very basic coating to plan out the shape and expression that the painting is going to take. And when I'm working I don't really start with a plan. I don't even always use an inspiration picture to go from. This was just something that I've been wanting to do for a while. Um, but when I'm painting, I just kind of start going and seeing the shape that it takes. And I'm a little bit torn on working with inspiration pictures because I start getting a little bit too much up in my head about what it should look like based on the picture instead of letting the image really just flow. So there's my dry brush, nice big round fluffy dry brush to smooth out some of the sand area. But when I'm working with an inspiration picture, um, I don't do it too often because I do like to just start applying paint and seeing where it goes and trying to get a little bit away from realism and more into an abstraction. You'll kind of see how this is a blend of many different styles by the time it's all done. Um, I really love this color that I'm applying for the base coat of the water. It looks very tropical, actually. It looks very South, Flor South Florida, Caribbean Sea, um, but I think it adds like a nice warmth to the ocean on a day that was very gray and dark. Um, we went to the beach a lot this summer. Um, my kids are eight and three, and after spending so much time in the house this past year, it was very important to me to use any opportunity we had to get outside and get into nature. And this was a day that it was very overcast to begin with. And those are some of my favorite days to go to the beach because there's usually not a crowd. <laughs> no one wants to be at the beach on a overcast day, at least not as many people as usual. And this beach in particular, is very flat and very open at, li at low tide. Oh, here comes the spatula. <laughs> so this is a different technique than working with a brush where I just load up some paint on the spatula and spread it across. Um, and this is where I kind of start really letting loose and seeing what happens and not being so worried about making it look like the picture. 
So yeah, we spent this morning at the beach over the summer and we watched this giant storm cloud just kind of emerge to the north. I don't even know if it was directly over Boston or if it was maybe on the North Shore, but it was a giant storm cloud and it was really cool to kind of just watch it come out and meet the, meet the ocean. All right. This is a technique I've actually never tried before, applying paint daubs directly from the tube onto the canvas and then using the palette knife to scrape it across. But I think this is going to be something that I'm gonna play with a lot more. This is maybe my favorite stroke of the whole painting right here. Watch this. It's like spreading frosting on a cake. It's such a great feeling. <laughs> and if you paint and you, you know that feeling of just working across a canvas with your hands and you reach a point where it becomes very playful and you just go with the flow because you might spread some paint somewhere and you don't like it, but you can't really remove it. <laughs> you have to make it work. You have to be flexible and you have to allow yourself to be open to making mistakes. My kids have this awesome book. It's called Beautiful Oops. And it's all about when you make a mistake, making it into something beautiful. You know, unexpected things happen when we're making art. And sometimes a page drips, sometimes we drip coffee on our paper. But if you step back and look at the oops, you can usually figure out a way to make it work. I think that's such an important concept for not just kids to learn, but grown ups too. You know, we're not perfect. And it's good to be able to go with the flow. And laugh at yourself when you make a mistake, when you make a big oops. What I love so much about the painting process is that it, it has really helped me let go of what I think art should be and I can just play. It doesn't have to be good, it doesn't have to be perfect, it doesn't have to be anything. As long as I'm enjoying the process. And you know, even when I'm done, Oh, here's a good example of a stroke that I didn't like, that big fat blue <laughs> on the left. Um, but you'll see where I go from there. You know, I don't always love my paintings when I'm done, but I still feel emotionally attached to them <laughs> because they take so much time and so much love. I have so many different emotions about them depending on what inspires them. Ooh, some purple in the sky. I forgot I did that. And then I added this warm, soft blush pink. Um, the way the sunlight was coming out from behind that storm cloud, it was just so subtle but golden. And I really, if you know me and my art, you know I love my vibrant colors. So this was like a fun way to add a little hint of golden light. Okay, maybe a big hint. <laughs> it's so funny watching this video back because there's different moments where I think to myself, oh, I wish I had stopped there. I really like that. And I know where it's going already. It's really fun to watch the process. If you create art, sometimes it's really great to just hit record on your camera phone or whatever so you can maybe watch yourself in the process you're gonna discover new things about yourself all right this is where we get crazy I have that big round dry brush again and I just started dabbing some white like really energetic textured strokes and then I just kept going I did not plan on doing this and once I started I was like okay I'm all in I'm gonna do this whole painting with all these energetic, punchy dabs. This is in real time what it looks like. <laughs> A little less hectic, but I really just fell in love with it at this point. 
it started feeling a bit Van Gogh to me in the way the colors created so much energy. This entire painting took about three hours from start to finish and it's all crushed into about 12 minutes here. Added a little bit more warmth to the beach, a little bit more bright yellow. It was getting a little muddy with all the um, round brush daubs, but yeah. This is a really fun, energetic piece for me. It almost looks like a blue spirit swooping across the water from left to right. I don't know, it's pretty cool. It's funny, you never know what you'll find in your paintings when you're staring at them later. I always look for faces. I don't know if that's a weird thing. All right, you can really see the texture of those brush strokes, all those daubs. All right, thank you guys for watching. This one is called Where the Storm Meets the Sea. It is on a gallery wrapped canvas using acrylic paints. Prints will be for sale on my website, which is linked in the comments. Don't forget to subscribe, and if you want to become a supporter of this channel, you can go to patreon.com slash Shannon Sorensen. Hope you have a beautiful day. Take care, friends.